With such an amazing response to our video on the Netherlands, we just had to go deeper into the low-lying country. And you know why this is clever if you watched the first video, so go ahead and do that if you haven't watched it yet. But, but don't forget to come back to this one when you're done, and pay the respect back to these Yankees. No, we didn't mix up the United States with its 236 times smaller country, yet the USA was forever marked by the place across the Atlantic as the origin story of their international nickname Yankees leads back to the Dutch. The legends state that as the area around the state of New York was known as New Netherland in the 7th century, the English inhabiting this space started calling the Dutch settlers their Yankees, as a mocking term because so many of them were called Jan or Kees, typical Dutch names, right? There are other Netherlands related theories to the origin story all of them arriving that the famed New York Yankees sign, seen by everyone and worn by many New Yorkers, Americans, baseball fans or not, can be squeezed into the list of Dutch symbols. As we keep proving, such a densely populated country is equally compactly filled with interesting facts, people and their achievements, collectively or individual. One of the unified accomplishments is that the Dutch are the most proficient nation when it comes to speaking English as a second language, probably another great reason why there were so many of you Dutchies on the last video. It's true, the Dutch are leading the pack of the non-native English speakers even ahead of the Scandinavian countries. And speaking of many people watching our videos, make sure you also subscribe to the channel so you get notified when a new video comes out. Unsurprisingly, like the Northern Europeans, the Dutch have also infiltrated Hollywood, seamlessly, stealthily, with no accents or wooden clogged footsteps tipping them off. Only the Nace, like the original X-Men star Famke Janssen, known for the role of John Grey, is from Netherlands, as are the Game of Thrones cast members Carice Van Houten and Michelle Heisman. Do you speak their tongue? Tell them to lift their swords. While they were all preceded by the memorable Rutger Hauer, of the Blade Runner fame and the director of Robocop, Starship Troopers and Total Recall, Paul Verhoeven. Well, there are a lot of assholes, yes. <laughs> The Netherlands has a history of artistic influence that spans centuries though. Their painters left unmissable marks on the once blank canvases of history. There's something for everyone in the works of the Dutch artists. Whether it's Van Gogh, who went mad before the world went crazy for him, or the two possible Giesling enjoyers, more on this later, Johannes Verme and Rembrandt, who never left their country, or Hieronymus Boch, who was definitely not a madman. Definitely. Clearly. I am sure of it. He also obviously didn't predict the destiny of Van Gogh nearly four centuries prior. Now the Dutch dominates a different field of arts, electronic music, across its subgenres. Just listening to DJs would require a video of its own, but some of the most well-known names include Martin Garrix, Armin van Buren, Tiesto, Nicky Romero, Afrojack and Hardwell. But the country hasn't just influenced arts, the world's biggest sport has been molded by Dutch minds. Football, or soccer if you're an actual Yankee, has been revolutionized by the Dutch, and the Netherlands is known as the place for producing textbook technical perfect players with an attacking mindset, while the country's biggest success remains the 1988 European Championship triumph. Besides their football impact, which would also require a video of its own, the Dutch can be very proud of their compatriot Max Verstappen, who won the FED World Championship in 2021. And it's going Dutch! In 2021, Max Verstappen! With field hockey and korfball, mm, okay, as other popular sports alongside ice skating. The latter makes a lot of sense considering the importance of gliding on frozen water in the history of the country. During the Eighty Years' War, mentioned in the first video, the Dutch faced a siege of Amsterdam by the Spanish Empire. During the winter, the port of the city was frozen and the Spaniards started marching clumsily towards the city across the ice. Yet they were faced with a remarkable sight. The Dutch soldiers put on their skates and met their charge with a maneuverability that was impossible to combat. After firing their weapons, the skate shooters returned swiftly to safety to reload. The Spanish commander Duke of Alva didn't hide his respect after the retreat. It was a thing never heard of before today, to see a body of musketeers fighting like that on a frozen sea. Now, in happier times, skating is a part of Dutch culture through Elfstedentog. That is the 11 cities tour ice skating competition on natural ice in the province of Friesland. The almost 200 kilometers of gliding area to be covered by several hundred competitors in a speed skating competition and over 15,000 leisure participants. 
a marathon that is finished in 7 hours by the fastest ice sprinters. The only issue is that there have only been 3 tours held in the last 50 years, the last one coming in 1997. Precisely because it is held on natural ice and the load of 15,000 plus people requires a certain thickness, with the last real chance of Elfstedentoch coming in 2012 before it was cancelled for safety reasons when the temperature suddenly rose. So climate change is already affecting all I mean the Netherlands. The Netherlands guys, nothing else, we stated this before. Yet it's still impressive that the competition held, ever at all, like at any time, considering that most of the country should be underwater, if not for the Dutch ingenuity and engineering. None more monumental than the conquering of their newest province, Flevoland, from the hands of, well, the sea. Through a very complex and long process of drainage and building barriers, starting in early 20th century and culminating in 1986 with the founding of the 1412 km squared province, nearly all consisting of reclaimed land, the majority of the area is used for agriculture, but the total population of the territory is reaching half a million already. With one of the two parts of Flevoland, Flevopolda, being the largest artificial island in the world. With such resourcefulness, it's not surprising that the Dutch have been hired by other places like Dubai for their needs regarding man-made islands. These battles with the sea and the fact that the country's canals, lakes and ditches makes it completely logical that submarines and Wi-Fi were invented here. Besides the microscope, telescope and Wi-Fi's younger stepbrother Bluetooth technology. As much as sea is the enemy of the Dutchies, it's also their biggest ally as 82.5% of the Netherlands' GDP comes from exports. And the key factor in that is the city of Rotterdam, known as the gateway to Europe. The 10th largest port per volume of cargo that goes through them. So large that it's 1.5 the size of Manhattan. And hence, it's not surprising that the Dutch have some of the biggest companies in the world. Shell, XR, Airbus, Heineken and of course Philips, with 11 total rankings on the Fortune Global 500 list for the companies with the highest revenue. Significantly impressive considering the government of the country incentivized emigration after World War II because the infrastructure was so wrecked resulting in 500,000 leaving for the US, Canada and Australia. Saved by businesses Savaness that has been made on a long tradition dating even before the Dutch East India Company, which many considered the biggest company ever, like including today, it's believed that the business culture was nurtured by the Dutch keeping true to their own way of communicating, strict to the point and honest no matter what. Recht voor zijn raap is een geliefde uitdrukking in Nederland en dat betekent dat je meteen van alles en nog wat Direct Stemming in part of the country's significant trading past when precise and quick exchange of information was of paramount importance. This made the country fertile for companies as much as it is for tulips. And we definitely saw the bluntness in action with every small detail mentioned in the comments of the first video. And while possibly others would mind, we embrace it. Yet this bluntness that might be misregarded as coldness by foreigners is contrasted with a tradition of social tolerance. It ties in with what unfortunately most solely connect the country with soft being decriminalized, and being legal, etc. That is most of those who don't watch our videos. Still, they are a big reason why Dutch tourism had 20 million international arrivals in 2019. That's way more than the country's population. Their neighbors in Belgium had less than half of that number, and all that despite the Netherlands being a very cloudy country. Still, despite all that unpredictable weather, with frequent drizzles and complaining about it, the Dutch are the world's most avid bikers, with 32,000 kilometers of bike roads across the country. And if that number isn't making you dizzy, the city of Utrecht bicycle parking lot slash garage absolutely will, with its capacity of 12,500 bikes. So many things, so many people, all in small space. Yet what's possibly the most inspiring thing about the Netherlands is that despite the crowdedness and being on top of each other while the sea wants to devour them, they have an important word in their culture. Gezellig, or gezellig that is hard to translate, but it's understandable to everyone. It refers to the feeling of coziness, fun, in a social and relaxed setting, and also a sense of belonging, time spent with loved ones and togetherness. Hopefully this video will also lead you to more gheseleg in your own lives.